geographically and historically, New York City begins here, in the tiny area from Wall Street down. And when disaster strikes down here, as it often has, it can seem like the city will end here, too. But if the 400 years of history compacted down here tell us anything, it's a story of survival. This area has survived invasion and occupation, disastrous fires, terrorist attacks, and many crashes right over here at the Stock Exchange. The first seeds of the metropolis were planted by the Dutch in the 1620s around Bowling Green. So if we were standing here in the 1620s and we knocked down all these buildings, what, is, what do we see down here? Trees, and not trees like these, but great tall towering pine trees. When the fort was down here, there was a parade ground where soldiers practiced maneuvers. That very quickly turned into a market space where farmers in outlying districts brought their produce to sell. It became a famous place for prostitutes to haunt in the evening, and ever since then it's been some kind of public space. So this is Pearl Street, mm -hmm. and was that on the water? It was the waterfront, more or less. Wow. It's called Pearl Street because of all the mother of pearl from the oysters that used to be in the East River. From the start, New Amsterdam was a party town known for its many taverns. One of the most famous taverns stood along the Pearl Street waterfront. This little outline, as you can see it, is the original Stadt's House, the first city hall, which was also a tavern which was also a jail, so you could, in one day, go from sitting on a court case to a drunken debauch to jail without ever leaving, <laughs> without ever leaving this little place where we're standing. That same year, a few blocks north, the Dutch built a defensive wall across the island. It was a simple earth and timber construction with a dirt path running alongside. You can look at Wall Street today and you realize this was not laid out according to anybody's street grid. It's so irregular, you know, it's, it's not straight. It's not the same width. Uh -huh. It's narrow at this end. It's wide at the other end. Um, it's just a place where people walk. And the, the marvelous thing is that all these people walking here today are walking in the footsteps of the Dutch burgers of New Amsterdam. Ah. The wall came down in 1699, a few years after the British seized New Amsterdam and renamed it New York. Come on inside Federal Hall. Work began on a new city hall at the corner of Wall and Nassau Streets. That building later became Federal Hall, where George Washington was sworn in as president in 1789. Beautiful. He was inaugurated in a building that had previously been the New York City Hall. Oh, okay. That was then called Federal Hall. So what happened to that building? Well, the first capital of the United States was sold for scrap. <laughs> so they tore it down. They got $425 <laughs> for the window glass and the brick and whatever could be recycled out of that building. So they saved this. They say this. This is a piece of sandstone. In the 1700s, merchants conducted trades outdoors on Wall Street. In 1790, they formed a tontine, or investment group, and built the Tontine Coffee House at the northwest corner of Wall and Water Streets. The market began a long history of ups and downs right away. And almost immediately, in the early 1790s, they began the kind of speculation in this case in government securities that we are so familiar with, painfully familiar with today. 1792, in fact, is the first Wall Street panic, and it's incited by a patrician New Yorker named William Dewar. Dewar began a, a, a conspiracy of inside trading that included some of the city's Dutch elite, speculating in what the price of the new government bonds would be. Dewar was enormously overextended, uh, and he as we're so familiar with today, went bankrupt. But in Dewar's case, there was no bailout. Instead, because the collapse of this insider trading scam produced an immediate local depression, the populace of New York was outraged, and they chased Dewar through the streets right here where we're standing today, and would have probably disemboweled him had they caught him. From those early meetings in coffee houses, what we know as the New York Stock Exchange evolved. A long string of crises, including collapses in 1873 and 1893, preceded the Great Crash of 1929. Stock market crashes were far from the only calamities Lois Manhattan has survived. In the 17 and 1800s, enormous fires destroyed large sections of the area, including the original Trinity Church in 1776. At the time the British had occupied the city and Washington's troops 
were encamped up on Harlem Heights. And the fire grabbed the whole church, went all the way up the steeple in this huge column of flame that Washington's troops saw from Harlem Heights. And then it crashed to the ground. It was really a kind of eerie premonition of 2001. The financial district came under terrorist attack well before September 11, 2001. On September 16, 1920, a horse-drawn cart parked here was loaded with TNT and lead sash weights. It exploded in the midst of a lunchtime crowd, killing 30 instantly and maiming another couple of hundred. You can still see the marks of the shrapnel here on the wall of the J.P. Morgan building. Anarchists were suspected, but no one was ever prosecuted. Another lunchtime bomb ripped through the France's Tavern in 1975, killing four and injuring 50 others. The FALN, a Puerto Rican separatist group, claimed responsibility. And the first precinct has always been down here. Yes. Lois Manhattan is also where the history of law enforcement in the city begins. Equipment used by the old Dutch rattle watch is on display at the New York City Police Museum on Old Slip. Mike, what are these contraptions we're looking at? These are actually wooden rattles, and this is a very early part of uh, police equipment. This is uh, how they would signal one another in case of a problem. It, they work very similar to a New Year's Eve noisemaker. Yeah. They use these because of a very important reason. The police whistle hadn't been invented yet. And who was the watch? What were there they was doing? basically eight men hired to do patrol at night, and this started in 1658. And they went around at night, they went around with their rattle, they went around with a lantern looking for fire. They're looking for crime. As a matter of fact, the police department and the fire department had the same parent in the rattle watch of 1658. We think of lowest Manhattan as all business and finance, but it's actually had a long history as a residential area as well. In fact, Greenwich and Washington streets west of Trinity Church were once lined with tenements and storefronts like these. They were mostly demolished to make way for the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel and the World Trade Center. In 1844, Edgar Allan Poe and his wife Virginia lived briefly in a boarding house here at this appropriately grim-looking site. This is the former Deutsche Bank building, heavily damaged on 9-11. In the last several years, a lot of older skyscrapers that were abandoned as office spaces have been converted to residential buildings, like the former Citibank Farmers Trust building. The attempt to turn Lowest Manhattan into a neighborhood again is another sign of how this area has always survived, adapted, and rolled with the changes.